Anyway, so I, I want to show you this letter. Because okay. It's a fantastic letter. One of the times that I believe Larry was very unfair. Mm -hmm. This is one time in, in our lifetime that Henry actually stopped drinking and stopped doing hard drugs. Mm -hmm. He was actually just smoking weed. Mm -hmm. And he was playing great and he was feeling healthy. He was not drinking anymore. And then without a real reason, Larry pushed him out of the band. Hmm. And this is the letter he sent me. If you want to read it for the sure. folks. Okay. Okay, so it says, Dear Fido, too bad my job was for sale to the highest bidder. It's also my identity. I am the Can't Heat guitar player. If you get tired of being Larry's sideman and want to play some Can't Heat music, I'll be here. Please send my copies of the CD, My Legacy, I sent my tax stuff to Shirley a month ago. Please ask her to return them as I won't be able to uh, as I won't be able to pay. Henry. And then Viva PLO Palestine Liberation Organization. Oh, okay. Because Larry's a Jew. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> because Larry was a Jew. Oh my that's what God. that's one of the one of the funniest yeah. parts of the letter. They really Viva had a PLO. Few. They really had a food going, didn't they? <laughs> That's great. That's so funny. Viva that is funny. <laughs> During the times of the, you know, uh, yeah. uh, uh, Arafat. Arafat, right. yeah. Right. The same right. And Larry being the Jew, and right. Henry being the right. southerner, you know, Viva Piel. So I have I, mean, a, I got I have some a, incredible letters here. By I, the have, way. I have a question Look about... Look at the original. Uh, okay, which is this? That's going up the country, baby. Wow, look at that. Now, did Alan play the flute on that? No. Who played it? Uh, the first recording we did with the flute was Tank Harrigan. Really? You know who Tank was? The no. baritone player of the Ray Charles band. Really? Wow. That's the original. Huh. But then Alan didn't like it that much. He was a little bit out of tune. Uh -huh. And Alan was really special about it, too. So he decided he wanted to hire somebody else. And he hired... Gosh... What's his name? I have a, a senior moment right now. Uh, I'll think about it. Yeah, I mean, I always he hired, thought it was... He hired another... Paul... Paul Horn. Paul Horn, yeah, I've heard of Paul, Paul Horn. Horn. He's That's a real he famous, had. real famous jazz very, player. Very, very classy, classy right. jazz player. Right. I cannot tell the difference between the Tank version and the Paul Horn version. Interesting. Yeah. I feel the Paul Horn version is more exact, more perfect. Right. Okay. Right. And, but that's what Alan wanted. So, so we did two two versions of it. You know, the the Paul Horn version, which is the one in the later versions of the record, and the original with. Uh, I always with thought it was a pan. Band. I always thought it was a pan flute or something. The original was a pan flute. Was it the one with okay. uh, with Paul Henry Horn? Thomas? Oh, really? Okay. Henry Thomas yeah. is the original going down that's south. What I yeah. That yeah. was going down okay. south. That was the name of the song. Right. Which, by the way, they 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 blame us some of the. Purists and bad people that don't like Can't He, they blame us for, they claim that we plagiarize the, uh, plagiarize plagiarize yeah, the, the, yeah. the song. You know, we copy the, uh, the, the arrangement, yes, because it's a wonderful arrangement and right. wonderful music. Right. But the words, the words are Alan's. Oh, those are his lyrics. Okay. Yeah. And the lyrics are very yeah. important in a song. Sure so are. this is not plagiarizing or copying right. anything. There right. is the proof right there that right. Alan Wilson wrote the lyrics. That he wrote all it. his yeah. corrections yeah. and all that are here. Yeah. See, flute, flute, like intro, yeah. bridge, you know, he's right. even correcting there. Yeah. That's amazing you have that. So I wanted to get into the thing with Alan. Um, you have to see this other lyric. Okay. Which one is this? <laughs> <laughs> this is another really uh, the two drunks making a bet that okay. one of them will lose 50 pounds or so yeah 50 pounds yeah within the pint of 90 days and the old one will stop drinking is this so, between henry and bob henry and bob we were at the hilton in okinawa we were playing actually in okinawa of all places and, of course, there is a letter. It's such a funny letter that I kept. Okay, so... It says, I, Bob Hyde, do, do hereby, hereby agree to lose a total of 50 pounds between the time of 90 days. If I, the end of above, stop, I don't know, period, I, none of lost the weight, 
the Avot, I mean, they, they were drunk, both of them, yeah. making this <laughs> He's much drunk. Yeah. I study the amount of loss of weight within this spe specified. I hold no liability towards Henry Vestine to stop drinking any alcohol. Otherwise, I hold no such little, little, little. Liability? I, I, liability. Yeah. And then he signs it. They're both That's high. Great. <laughs> I agree to the above conditions, if yet, Henry Vestine. That's great. Witness by John Paul, 1980. Crazy, yeah. I mean, the fat guy making a bed with a drunk. <laughs> he will lose 50 pounds in 90 days, and the drunk will stop drinking. And I have a feeling it never happened on either one. It never happened. And this, one, this, yeah. this, this letter, I, I ended up with it because it's just funny. Right, right. And just the fact it has the Hilton Okinawa. That's great, yeah. You know, I'm telling you. Oh, wait a minute. Now, we were talking about the bust. These are the boys right there in front of the... Is that the police station? Yes, that's at wow. the police station. And uh, I'll, I'll read you what it says underneath. Hold this. Okay. It says there, members of the CAD California Blues Band, the CAD Heat, as they pleaded innocent in Denver to marijuana possession, from left to right, you know, Laurie Statman, that's Skip, and all that here, right. Frank Cook, Henry, Larry, and Bob. I don't know what Alan is. Alan is not there. Alan, maybe they I think get Alan busted. is in here. No, that's Alan. not Alan. No, that's that's Frank Cook. Oh, then who's this guy? That's Skip Taylor. Oh, that's Skip. Okay, so maybe he didn't get arrested. Maybe Alan was yeah. in the woods. Could be. That's Could possible be. that Alan was in the woods. Yeah. And I have the article yeah. here. Right. The Rolling Stone article about John Gray, the famous sheriff. Right. The hit, the hit song on Denver, led by Detective John Grain, well known as the Wild Herb of the West, Jeez. for his promise, I'm going to rid Denver of all long-haired people. The serious narcotics officer apparently conducting a concerted bust and hassle program to stifle a growing scene. Jeez. I mean, the whole thing, John Gray and, and long hair, the yeah. hit is on in Denver. Yeah. There it is. There is the boss. Crazy. Wait a minute. This is another... Okay, this is one side of the picture with Skip. Right. And this is another one without Skip and with the attorney. Oh, that's the attorney for Salazar. the... For Hand Heat? Yeah. Can't Heat? So I guess Alan... I don't know what happened to Alan. He must have not been charged. Right, let me see if I have another picture yeah. where he is on. No, I don't. So that's it. I'm glad that I'm showing you this. So, um, so after Woodstock, in 19, that was 1970, correct? 1969. 1969. Okay, so Alan was alive another year after that? Yes. Yeah. And that's when we recorded the Hooker and Heath record. Right. And we also recorded uh, Future Blues. Okay. With Harvey Mandel. Right. Okay. And that also had another hit record, Let's Work Together. Right. Which was originally written by Wilbur Harrison. Right. The same guy that wrote Kansas City. Exactly. I like to talk about yeah. this because people don't know yeah, about no, it. Yeah, no, they don't. They don't. And, you know? and, and so Wilbur Harrison about, was and, and almost Harrison, like a, he was almost a one-man band. Yeah, he was a one-man yeah. band. And Let's Work yeah. Together, his version right. of Let's Work Together is wonderful. Right. Yeah. And of course, Bob Hyde bought that record, of course, immediately. Yeah. And played it for us. And he said, this is a great song. Yeah. He says, but we're not going to do it. We're going to wait and see if he gets a hit with it. Right. But it disappeared. Yeah. Nothing happened. Yeah. So a few months went by, and then Bob comes back to us again and says, let's try it. Yeah, that's good. And then we heard it, and we said, yeah, let's give it a Probably try. Probably made a lot of money for him, I would think. Too. Oh, he was delighted. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. Wilbur Harrison yeah. was delighted with you. know, yeah. we, we made the song and became a huge worldwide record, sure, worldwide man. hit. It right. was actually a bigger hit in Europe and in Australia than in America. Right. In America, it was like number 10, 11. Right. Around but it got that. a lot of airplay, though. A lot of airplay. Yeah. And it's a, it's a classic song. It's a great song. Yeah. They use it for advertisements. They use it for movies. Mm -hmm. All that. And I hope Wilbur Harrison or his state is getting the money, you yeah. know. Yeah. But it was amazing how we recorded that song. We also recorded it 
almost like the John Lee Hooker sessions. Right. You know, it was recorded in mono. Yeah. I believe maybe we had two or three mics out there or something. Huh. Very old fashioned approach to recording. Yeah. And that's why the sound is so heavy and so nice. Right, right. You know, let's work together our version. It's, it's a killer. Yeah. The drone sound, the guitar sound, the, the, the distortion, all that. And as I said, it was made on a one or two takes. I have to say, Harvey Mandel replacing Henry was a perfect move. Well, H Harvey was very good. Because Harvey was uh, as close to Henry's style. The distorted, yeah. very personal they way really, of playing. They really See, played those very guys, similar. Those guys didn't sound like all the Eric Clapton's of right. the world. No, they were psychedelic. You know, and yeah. you know how we hire him, right? When, you know, Henry and Larry, of course, got into right. a fight at the Fillmore West. Right. On the stage. Right. Because Henry was so loaded, he had to sit down, that he forgot what key we were playing in. <laughs> you know, so, you know, he was totally loaded. So Larry goes right there on the stage, and says, I'll never play with this guy again. Yeah. This is a shame, you know. That and, was and, the and, end and, of and it. a few yeah. F words, yeah. you know, yeah. that went by. And Henry said, I'll never play with you again either. So we had to play another set. Yeah. And we're at the Fillmore West. I what did you do? Out. My Bluefield was there, and Harvey Mandel were there. Wow. So we asked Mike to come in. Okay? And he came and sat in with us and played the whole set with us. Uh -huh. And it sounded great. Talking about somebody that could play, you know, could take Henry's, right. Henry's place. Right. You didn't know that story, huh? No, I don't remember that. Yeah, no, the original guy was Mike Bloomfield. I didn't so, realize that. So we, Mike comes and plays with us, and we sounded great. Yeah. And we, you know, we were tired of Henry getting so loaded, too. Sure, you know? I of mean, course. It was yeah. always a, the weakest link, you know, messing right. with us, you know? Right. And uh, so we delighted. We, t we come to the backstage after the set, and we tell Mike... You want to join Can Heat? We're doing real good. We're famous right now. We have three hit records. You know? Right. Well, we have two hit records, two yeah. hit records, and uh, and hit albums. Right. And uh, and Mike says, you know, I love you guys, but I am burned out from traveling with right. with, with Paul. With the electric flag. And the and electric all flag. Yeah. He says, I right. don't want to travel anymore. Yeah. I can see how he felt. No, I know he. I felt feel like that, that way yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm I'm burned out about traveling. Right. You know, he right. he loved the music, but he didn't want to be on the road. Right. He didn't do well on the road. Well, you know, it's hard to do well on the road. Yeah, so I'm it, just saying he had sleep problems. It requires that, a special yeah. strength to be on it the does. road. It's a you hard, have to be strong. Hard gig, man. Yeah, it's a hard gig. People people yep. think, hey, how glamorous, how nice to be on it's the road. Anything like, but. It is not. No. You know? Even the guys that do airplanes and. Yeah, no, like no, and, and, and we matter. can't hear. We, we have the best yeah. first class everything. Yeah. Even like that, it's, it's, it's terrible. It's still tiring. So yeah. anyway, that's the story. So Mike Bloomfield sat in with us that day, and uh, and we offered him the gig, and he didn't take it. So then we played a second night. And the second night, we, we showed up without a, a guitar player. Wow. And then Harvey was there. Wow. So we invited Harvey to sit in, and it worked out really good, too, because, yeah. again, Harvey... I just done that stand back album with, with Charlie Muscle, right? right. You know, who is right. a great album. Yeah. Especially of the early albums. Yeah. I would put that together with the Born in Chicago with uh, with Butterfield. Right. I mean, those are the two earliest. Yeah. Oh yeah. Sh white boys from Chicago doing it. You know Definitely. what I mean? Yeah. And uh, and so Harvey came in, and that's we played, and we offered him the same gig that we offered to Mike Bluefield, and, and right. Harvey said, "Yes, I'll take it." Yeah. A week later, we were playing at Woodstock. Wow. Without rehearsing. So that was 69. Wow. Yeah, we didn't rehearse. Yeah. Because we had to fly from, from there to play at the Fillmore East. Yeah. Then we played the Fillmore East, and two days later we played at Woodstock. All this with Harvey, no rehearsals. Yeah. No wow. time for rehearse. That's amazing. But, you know, having Alan and Larry and me as a rhythm section. Yeah. You already had the basic. We already thing had that there. basic yeah. thing going you on, the thing and going Alan on. would just go and yeah. signal to Harvey, and Harvey right. would go. In Woodstock, you can tell. That, I mean, Larry Harvey doesn't know the songs really. Really, but he's soloing yeah. around them because yeah. you know he's very talented. Yeah. yeah, you know, so that was the story. Well, it was it was it's an instru It was a really very appropriate uh, replacement for for Vesky. Yeah, I think so too. Because they're very their styles are very similar. Yeah. I know Junior told me a great story <laughs> recently about uh he said one time Harvey came down to sit in with you guys 
and Henry was in the band, and Henry had been carrying this like revenge thing a bit about yeah. Harvey. For well, not like, against Harvey, against Larry. Oh, I thought it was about Harvey. No, no. Well, you know, it was some jealousy. You, jealousy. Know, you saw the letter. Yeah, you saw that letter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you decide to stop being Larry Taylor's sideman, right, and you right, want to play some right, canned heat right. music, yeah, you know, yeah. But he no. said he said uh, that, that that Henry was really out to show up Harvey that time. Yeah, I don't know if they ever played together on the stage. Let me I think, think they were playing together. Maybe on that they one. did. Maybe yeah. they did that one time. That's it must have been in San Francisco. It was one been. of the times we played there. Could have been, yeah. Yeah, but this was already many, many years ago after the. Oh yeah, it was way after, after the conflicts, yeah. you know, and all way that after. with Larry. Yeah, yeah, but you know, yeah. it's just been a great experience for the Canned Heat band to have all these great guitar players in the band. Yeah, well, you had you Hollywood know, Fast. We had there. Fast, we had Junior Watson, yeah. we had Harvey, we had Henry Vestine, you know right. what I mean? Yeah. And now we have Jimmy Vivi, no, who is very good right. too, you right. know? Yeah. So He's a good, good makes guy. sense a lot. Great musician and great, yeah. great singer too. Yeah. So, so when Alan died, uh, I know you guys were on your way to Europe or something. Yeah, that was terrible. And 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 he sometimes would show up very late. Well, what happened is that Alan, <clears throat> Alan, Alan, uh, Alan tried to kill himself before that. Really? He drove his. We, we got him a Volkswagen van, camper van. Right. I remember that in the book. So yeah. he could. So he could go out in the woods and do his thing and be yeah. happy. Right. The guy was depressed all the time. Yeah. He couldn't get laid. Yeah, uh, women. You know, I mean, yeah. uh, women admire him. You guys I don't figured that, he was they, a virgin. I think. Yeah, said, something. Yeah. Like, I mean, the guy was having yeah. problems with women, and, yeah. and and that made him weird about it. You yeah. know, I guess depressed, and right. he was just depressed. You know, I don't yeah. know. A very complicated situation. So we got him this van. Uh, so then eventually, Alan went out and used to go out on the woods and do his thing. One of the times he said he just decided that he didn't want to be alive anymore, and he drove them the van of the of the road. Wow. So he crashed the van. He crashed himself. I don't know he don't I don't think he hurt himself very bad. According to the doctors later they say he, he did serve had a concussion or something. Mm -hmm. And uh so he ended up in a hospital. And that's when they they put him under psychiatric care. Oh he was okay. Wow. Okay. And they gave him some yeah. pills and some antidepressants, etc. And there are some tapes that he did out of the hospital. They are very nice. And those were the planned tapes for the future of Cain Heat, for the, hmm. the, next, uh, the next LP we were going to make. Right. Those tapes, I, I re-released some of them in our Boogie House tapes collection that I have. Wonderful stuff of Alan playing acoustic mm -hmm. in the hotel. Yeah, we call them the, the, the no hotel. I'm sorry, the hospital. We call them the hospital tapes. Mm -hmm. So, after being in the hospital for a while, they gave him his pills, and they put him in charge of Bob. Bob Hyde is not really the type of person to take care of somebody like Al. Right. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. I mean, Bob was in these times he was high or drunk all the time. Yeah. You know, and he was partying and being being the bear. He couldn't mm -hmm. take care of a depressed guy that was like, you know. But, you know, there was nobody else, really. Right. You know, I I mean, I don't know what happened. I, I mean, I somehow wish Alan would have ended up in my house and not in Bob's house. Yeah. But anyway, I don't know if it would have changed things. Yeah. Alan already had planned to do something. Mm -hmm. Now, he went up there behind the house in Topanga Canyon and he died there of an overdose. But th there is people that say that it was an accidental overdose. There is a possibility that it was an accidental overdose. Yeah. Because he was planning already to make the next record and all that, and he was already taking his pills. We don't know if it was an actual suicide or if it was accidental. Yeah, him trying to sleep. Or but, yeah. but it happened. Yeah. It happened. Alan died, and as I said, we were on our way to, to Europe to play in Berlin. Uh, that was our first gig, and uh, boy, that was still when the wall was up. We were right. playing in East, in East Berlin, yeah. Right. And uh, and I remember we are in the airport in the limousine, getting ready to jump on the plane, and Skip Taylor shows up and says, 
you know, we cannot find Alan. Everybody's mm. been calling around. Have you seen Alan? Right. You know, Alan was in the mountain. It was a kind of a mountain behind Bog Heights House in Topanga mm -hmm. Canyon. Uh, Bob was too fat to be able to go up and see if he was right. Alan there. You know, impossible. Yeah. Even somebody with full strength, it's very hard to go up there. Sure. That's where Alan's body was found. Skip found his body there. And that's when Skip told us in the limousine, he says, I don't want to say this, but I think Alan is dead. Yeah. You know, he said that. Wow. And after he left us in the airplane, you know, we put us in the airplane, we went, took off without Alan. Uh, he went to Topanga Canyon to Bob's house, and that's where he found the body. Yeah. You know, and yeah. then his, the, the rest of the story is pretty much skips the story, how he found Alan with his hands together like this in his chest. He said he was smiling. He had a smile in his mm. face. Wow. So maybe yeah. he was maybe he was maybe he was living in a well, in a, in a good way. Yeah, you know? yeah. Uh, so that's how it happened, and we started playing without Alan. You know, more or less. It was so traumatic to be without one of our main sure, guys, of course. You know, yeah, one of our leaders. founders, one yeah. of the leaders. Right. But we did it, and then shortly after, we hire Joel Scott Hill. I don't know if you've heard of him. I have heard of him. He was one of the founders of Bobby Grape, you know, an right. old guy, you know, he had several bands. Right. <clears throat> he was not totally a blues guy, but he was an excellent singer. And, you know, he was available, he was ready to do it, and we hired him. Right. I, I think we could, we probably could have taken a little longer time and maybe find somebody more can heat. Right. You know? But I guess we were just working, and Joel came, and uh, Tony was playing with those bass. Larry was not in the band anymore mm -hmm. when Alan died. Uh, Tony de la Barrera was uh, the bass player at the time, mm -hmm. and uh, and he used to play with Joel. That's how that's how we okay. got it. You see, he, uh -huh. used to, he used to have a band called the L.A. Getaway, and uh, and that's how we hired Joel Scott Hill. He was with us. He recorded one record, the historical figures. Uh -huh. and ancient hits. But then again, that kind of hit was never to have a hit record again. You know? Right. That was that was it for the Without hit Without Alan. Yeah, yeah, without Alan and all yeah. that. Yeah. Now, uh, how did you guys, Mail and, and you guys became really close, right, when he first moved here? Well, you know, we, we, we rented a house that used to be Elvis Presley's house. Really? In... Uh, in uh, behind Sunset Boulevard, around the area where the whiskey is. Okay. In one of the houses back there, a beautiful house with a swimming pool and a great big garden. Right. Bob brought his <clears throat> his collection of seventy eights. Took just about the whole living room. Wow. That's how many he had. Yeah. You know, I mean, uh, yeah. walls, walls right. of seventy eights. Right. John Mayo used to come visit. Uh huh. And I remember me personally one time I saw him on on a tree. Sitting on a tree, you know, dressed almost like a hippie, you know, with Indian clothing, right? You know, leather clothing right. with Indian. Right. And I even asked, "Who's that guy?" You know, because I couldn't really recognize him. And they told me, "That's John Mayo, man. He came to visit." So I know that he hanged, and he was he, he. I guess he enjoyed being on that tree. Later on, he did a, a record called "Blues and Laura Right, Daniel. right, right. And, and he even he, has a song about there is a the song bear about, in there. about yeah. living with a bear. Right. But what happens is that the, the Elvis house didn't last too long. Hmm. I, I guess uh, there was a breakup. Skip and John Hartman broke up. Skip kept the band and John went on his own. Mm -hmm. And I guess they got rid of the house. They didn't rent it anymore. So Bob moved to Laurel Canyon right after the Elvis Presley house. And John Mayle visited him over there too. Mm-hmm. That's why he called the record. So they both ended up living in Laurel Canyon, both Bob and yes, Mayo. Yes, yes, and yeah. I lived in Laurel Canyon okay. myself too. John yeah. was my neighbor. Yeah, that was a real scene. Oh, it was a wonderful thing in too. Laurel Canyon. Yeah, there's yeah. a couple of books about Laurel Canyon. Where, uh, there are, yeah. Where they, uh, there's a new they documentary. Co they, quote me, they quote me a lot on one of those books too. Right. Yeah. See, now I didn't know the thing about that Henry Vestine actually played with Zappa. Oh, yeah, well, that's I originally no he played idea. with the Mothers of the Invention. I yeah. had no idea. Yeah, Henry, Henry was heavy. You that's know? wild. And Sapa fired Henry because of the drugs. Wow. Sapa I didn't like no Henry idea. got too loaded. He used to, he used to yeah. take pills and smoke weed and all yeah. that. I'm sure Sapa wouldn't have hired him, wouldn't fire him 
just for smoking pot. But it was mainly it was the, the drinking and yeah, the pills. Drinking and, and the attitude. Yeah. The attitude yeah. that you don't tell me what to do. I'm a great right. guitar player right. and I'll right. play right. great and, and fuck you, yeah. you know? Yeah. I mean, that's that's what he used to say. He used to yeah. tell that to Larry and yeah. all of us, you know? So it was like, I'll, I'll get high if I feel like it. You're not going to tell me. You had me some honorary ones in there, didn't you? Some what? Some honorary ones oh. in there. <laughs> oh, my God. You know? Yeah. So, yeah, that's that's how it happened. He played with, with Frank Zappa. And there are a few pictures around in the files in the in the Facebook of hmm. Henry and the Mothers of the Invention. What a trip. I had no idea, man. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's wild. So, uh, so I mean, you are you are the lone survivor of Canned Heat, of the original band. I mean, it's uh, because the bear died at 44. Yeah. And then you said... Alan died at 27. And at 27, he's one of the 27. 27 club. guys, yeah. yes. And uh, Henry right. died in 1997. Right. He must have been in his maybe late 40s, early 50s. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's brutal. It was brutal. It was well, brutal, especially the last tour with Henry. Yeah. When he was yeah. dying, but he yeah. refused not to go. I mean, he wanted to die playing. Yeah. And, yeah. and he did. He, he died overseas. He basically played the whole tour. Mm -hmm. And the day they were flying back That's from when he Paris. Died. Wow. He died in Paris. Yeah. Just like I know Jim Morrison. Watson, I know Watson told me that he... Oh, Watson he was, was the there. one that found him. Yeah. Not gonna look, because I wasn't the there. I was in Belgium yeah. with, with Dr. Boogie. Right. But, of course, the guys left. Yeah. They they took their airplane and they left. And right. I had to be I had to be the one that de dealt wow. with. Wow. With Interpol, yeah. with the American embassy, Jesus. with the French police, yeah. with everything. Because yeah. uh, I showed up and I had to tell him who he was, etc. Right. Because uh, Watson and all the the rest of the band, they they catch the plane and they left. Right. So you've kind of always been in the driver's seat. I, I mean, I, I, pretty I, much. Yeah. I had to deal with Bob Hyde's death too. Right. Right. And with Henry's Same death. Thing. Yeah. You know, and almost with Hollywood Fats there too. I saw Fats only a few a day before he died. Really? Now he was in the Blasters by the time he died, though, right? I I believe so. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yes. he was in the Blasters. Yeah, but right. you know what a mistake. You know, I call like Robert Lucas and Hollywood Fats and all those guys. I kind of call them Bob Heights children. Right. Right. They yeah. were almost the same thing, and they died the same. Now, way. was he, was he was was Fats in the band when Bob Hyde was still alive? Yes. Yeah. Yes, Fats played with us the tenth anniversary of Woodstock, and we did wow. that record of the tenth anniversary. We Hollywood Fats so played with us. Wow. That's seventy nine. Yes, yeah. seventy nine, eighty, and then Bob died in eighty one. Right. By the time Bob died. Fats and Larry have quit the band already. Larry again was God, happy. I must I must have opened that show for you guys right before Bob died. Because I opened for you guys in 81 one time. That's before Bob died. Right. And we had another Same band then. Fats was yeah. not with us anymore. Right, there was some Henry other Henry was back. Was Hen yeah, Henry, Henry was, was back. Henry was back. Again, I don't, I didn't the moment, know Larry, the leaves, was. The moment yeah. Larry leaves and Fats leaves, you know, Henry comes back. Yeah. You know, that's the way it was, yeah. Crazy. Yeah, so, yeah, the children of Bob Hyde, man, they, they, you know, they, they live their life and then they die just like Bob, you know, yeah. overdoses of heroin. What a, now, now, what a terrible Robert Lucas thing. didn't die like that, did he? Yeah, Robert died of an overdose he of heroin, did? too, yes. I did not know that. Yes, yes, and Fats, too. That's, well, I knew and Fats, Bob too. too. You know, you, you read yeah. the story in my, in right. my book. You know? Right, that's awful, man really bad yeah yeah well you guys are you guys were kind of an example of, of what not you know, to do of what not to do i mean you're, the, you're the only one you and larry are the only ones that yeah well you know figured that out because i i i was afraid of hard drugs i mean yeah. i tried everything yeah but not more than once right <laughs> you know right. what i mean yeah and the only thing i still do is i still smoke weed right I but i mean that. everybody kind of did that yeah think, yeah, yeah that was that's a lot a lot less than uh so what would be uh, what would be your advice on the music business as far as uh, the do's and don'ts and and how you can keep it together, how you can keep going on the road at your age? And well, many you're people. You're seventy eight now, right? Seventy seven. Seventy seven. Okay. 
But I mean, you know, going on the road. Seventy-seven I mean. sunsets <laughs> free. You remember that song? Of course. Da, 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 yeah. <laughs> well, you know, one thing they ask me always in most of the interviews is what you just asked. What kind of advice you give to young musicians? Let's mm -hmm. say people coming. What I've noticed, and I see after living the life for the last 55 years especially, my advice will be, you're going to be into music, be into music for music itself, not for your desire to become famous, rich, recognized, etc. Right. Because the chances are that that will not happen. Yeah. You know, what happened to us, it was an accident almost. Yeah. There are many other drummers like me, or better than me, that never had that. But they had music. They had a life of music. And I had many friends, musicians, friends, colleagues from the U.S. and from Mexico that never became very famous or known, but they had a life in music. And that's the main thing. Music itself has the power. You don't need to be famous. You don't need to be rich. If you just stay with the music, the music itself will give you the power and give you the satisfaction. Because that's, that's what it's all about. It's about playing the music. If it happens that you all of a sudden get recognition and get famous and all that, that is an extra. Yeah. But that is not the reason why you should go into music. Unfortunately, when I see all these younger people, you know, the pop thing is so prevalent now times. You know, you, 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 you see the Grammys, for example, they are so different as what yeah. they used to be 15, 20 years ago. This is all selling youth and looks, not music. Or some of that music, if they can call it that. <laughs> But as I say, that is basically my advice. My advice is go for the music, for the power of music. Most of my friends of mine that are not as famous or not, They are in my age, too, and some of them dying, etc. And they had the whole life playing music in clubs, recording, sometimes making good money, sometimes not. But they had the music. And that's what I said. The power of music is very important. And that is the reason why to go into music, not fame and fortune. Yeah. Amen. Well, thank you, Fido. Great interview. Okay, I hope it works out okay. No, that's great. Thank you very much. All right. Appreciate you being here.